To anyone that has operated heavy equipment, agricultural machinery, forestry machinery, diesel engine machinery, and lawn equipment, has this man to thank, the legendary John Deere, whose grave is located in Moline, Illinois at Riverside Memorial. Born in Rutland, Vermont, and eventually moving to Illinois to invent the first successful steel plow in 1837, by 1855, Deere's factory sold more than 10,000 plows, and in 1868, Deere incorporated his business, which would later become known as Deere & Company. He passed away on May 17, 1886, at age 82. Today, John Deere's net worth is $112.7 billion, a listed number 87 in the Fortune 500 America's ranking. When you think of the Prohibition era with the organized crime in the city of Chicago, there is but one legendary gangster who comes to mind, Al Capone. Nicknamed Scarface, he was a businessman, bootlegger, racketeer, and co-founder and boss of the Chicago Outfit, which he had a seven-year reign. On February 14, 1929, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre occurred where seven Irish members of Capone's rival gang, the Northside Gang, were shot and murdered by unknown assailants. The crime remains unsolved, but Capone has been considered to be responsible. In 1931, he was charged with five counts of tax evasion and served eight years in prison. He passed away on January 25, 1947 from cardiac arrest after a stroke at age 48. One of the most tragic and saddest murders in American history was the abduction, torture, and lynching of 14-year-old African-American Emmett Till in 1955. After being accused of offending Carolyn Bryant, a white woman, he was abducted by Bryant's husband and his half-brother, who would beat and mutilate Till, eventually sinking his body in the Tallahatchie River. His body was returned to Chicago, and his mother insisted on an open casket funeral to show what they had did to Emmett. The two men were later found not guilty, and his murder drew attention to the long history of violent persecution of African Americans. Till became an icon on the civil rights movement. Bryant, who is 88 years old, recently revealed that it was a lie and Till was innocent. Rest in peace, Emmett Till. At Washington Memory Gardens in Homewood, we find the final resting place of actor and comedian Bernie Mac. Gaining popularity as a stand-up comedian, he, along with Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and D.L. Hewley, acted together in the movie The Original Kings of Comedy. He starred in his show, The Bernie Mac Show, from 2001 to 2006. His film roles include Mr. 3000, Bad Santa, Friday, Ocean's Eleven, Life, and more. He passed away on August 9th, 2008 from pneumonia at age 50. Rolling Stone ranked him number 41 of the 50 best stand-up comics of all time. Whenever you think of radio and television sportscasting, one name stands out above most. The legendary Harry Carey. Spanning a broadcasting career of 53 years from 1945 to 1997, he called play-by-play -play for the St. Louis Cardinals, St. Louis Browns, Oakland Athletics, Chicago White Sox, and finally the Chicago Cubs. In all, Carey broadcast more than 8,300 baseball games in his career and was known for his trademark opening to baseball games, a one, a two, a three, and then he would launch into his version of Take Me Out to the Ball Game. He passed away on February 18, 1998 from complications due to a heart attack and brain damage at age 83.